Why does you build it, you run it work so well, yet leave people feeling a little uncomfortable? What are the usual excuses? I mean, concerns. And how can you help people to overcome them? Hello, and welcome to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, you should do so now. That's the way for you to stay up to date with all of the cool stuff that's happening here. I'm Steve Smith, I'm Cornish, and I'm the Global Head of Modernization and Platforms at Equal Experts. I'll be your host for today. I'm afraid Dave Farley isn't available. He's lost a bet to me, again, so he's sulking inside his shepherd's hut, recording that folk music album he's always wanted to sell. You build it, you run it is where product teams build, test, deploy, operate and support their own live, modern services. It's awesome. And in my last video, I talked about some of the excuses, I mean, concerns, that people might have about adopting you build it, you run it in their enterprise organization. And in a video before that, I talked about the benefits of this model. Those videos are on screen now, be sure to check them out. Today, we'll cover the final couple of mysterious reasons why people just can't quite see how you build it around it could work in their organization. And the two we're going to cover today are engineers would have no time for product features and my personal absolute all-time favorite, we can't hire 20 DBAs. No one asked you to. All right, let's start with this idea that engineers would have no time for product features. What's unsaid here is that there's this expectation that live services will generate a huge amount of unplanned tech work, reactive configuration fixes, workarounds, data fixes, faulty deploys, intermittent smoke tests, dodgy dashboards, live incidents, and you should leave all of that nasty low value work to an operations team so your engineers can carry on with product features. That's not how it has to be. When you do, you build it, you run it, your engineers have the incentives and the powers to actually tackle the unplanned tech work. No doubt your operations team had good ideas on how to solve it, but they weren't empowered to do that because it wasn't their code base. It wasn't their service. When you do, you build it, you run it. It is absolutely that case. So that level of unplanned tech work can be managed. Permanent fixes can be implemented in a code base. It's not really a fair comparison, is it? Because your operations team can only dampen fires in a code base, whereas your engineers can actually extinguish the fires. And when they're on call, they'll be incentivized to do just that. Measure the amount of unplanned tech work that's happening in your teams. Insist that they track any BAU task that takes more than half a day and it has to be prioritized by their product manager. Good things happen when product managers have to prioritize reliability alongside functionality because then they'll learn that reliability is actually functionality. Reliability is the foundation of a great user experience. Paved roads in platform engineering are really important here. I've talked about them on the channel before. Here's the video, check it out later on if you like. Paved roads are BAU killers because what you're doing is you're automating user journeys for your teams. You're giving them build jobs, alerts, automated tests, everything else all out of the box. And one error for one team can be fixed for all teams at the press of a button. This is how you really drive down that unplanned work for all of your teams and achieve daily deploys and a super fast time to restore. Now let's look at my absolute all time favorite. We can't hire 20 DBAs. Nobody asked you to. Yes, DBAs are important. Yes, DBAs are expensive. No, you should not have developers creating indexes on live databases because that will end in tears. We've all seen that. Like if there's one thing I don't want access to, it's a live database full of millions of real user records. I shouldn't be there. And no one said you have to have one DBA for every team. It's just not the case. There are complicated subsystem team in team topologies parlance. Keep them that way. Don't try to embed DBAs or share them between teams. You will end up with lonely DBAs who feel disconnected from their own tribe. They'll either have too much work to do or not enough work to do. Map out the work that your DBAs actually do day to day and week to week. Take the repeatable low value work and push as much of it as you can onto your cloud provider. Things like backup and disaster recovery, for example. Take the repeatable medium value work they do and turn into self-service deployment pipelines. Things like creating a database schema, for example. You don't actually need a DBA for that. You need DBA permissions. So collaborate together on a self-service pipeline with really strong guardrails. And after that database schema is created, the DBAs get a nice email in their inbox about it. This will encourage engineers to learn more about DBAs and the important work that they do. And it will empower your DBAs to really focus on ad hoc, 
high value work like teaching developers how to actually create performant live databases, how to index live database tables. Next time I'm here, we'll cover another engineering topic. I feel like we've done enough on you, but you're on it now, don't you? But for that to happen, Dave has to finally unlock that shepherd's hut or come up with his folk music album. I warned him that people aren't going to buy experimental sheep noises, but he just doesn't listen to me. Thanks for watching.